Hello once again, friends, and welcome to the Church at Lion of Judah Sunday, November 12th service. This week, Pastor Matthew Hartman gives this very enlightening and inspired message titled, Avoiding Obstacles. How to avoid situations that may distract you from your walk and continued growth. Like to come join us in person? We're at 5732 Douglas Road in Toledo, Ohio. Service times are Sunday, 1030 a.m. and Friday at 7 p.m. Like to partner with us in our ministry and world outreach? Head over to www.lionofjudatoledo.org and click the donate button. Thanks for joining us today. Now on to the message. But there's a there's a particular scripture. I want to go to 2 Thessalonians. This isn't wasn't in my outline. The Lord spoke this to me, uh, you know, as I was continuing to prepare and, and pray about this and you know, asking him, you know, why I feel this temptation and the struggle is increased. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7, it says this. If you'd like to stand for a moment, that'd be good. So Paul is talking about the man of lawlessness. He's talking about the end days and the return of Jesus. And, and you know, some, some people in the, in the church of Thessalonica were saying, you know, were hearing things that Jesus had already come back, that, you know, the second coming wasn't true, like, et cetera, et cetera. So Paul was addressing this, and he was saying, no, he hasn't come back because these particular things have to happen before he comes back. And, you know, he, so he was addressing this situation. And then he, and then he says this, though, in, in, in verse 6 and 7 again, uh, uh, chapter 2. And you know what restrains him now. He's talking about what's restraining the devil. What's restraining the Antichrist from emerging. The man of lawlessness is the Antichrist. And he's saying, this is, you know, you know what's restraining him now. So that in his time, he will be revealed. So God will reveal the Antichrist in his time. But Paul's saying at this point, he hasn't been revealed yet. He's being restrained. And then he goes on to say in verse 7, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. It's already happening. There are Antichrists, but not the Antichrist, right? The Antichrist spirit is already at work. And he's saying you know, that the mystery is already, it's already happening. And then he goes on to say, Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. The he who restrains, what is the power of God on the earth today? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is restraining evil. And I feel like, and you know, Rabbi mentioned the same thing on his live Friday, and I've heard him you know, teach this many times, that God is beginning to pull the restrainer back. Not that he's not in you and in me, but the, the thing that is holding back the darkness in the world, which is the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit here on the earth, the manifest presence of God, the Holy Spirit on the earth, is being taken out of the way to allow sin to increase and run its course. These things have to happen in order for Jesus to come back. We were talking in the prayer room, oh, how I long for Yeshua to come back. And I'm praying that he just would keep me from evil, right? That he would keep me and, until the day of his return. And there's lots of scriptures that promise that he will. But this is why I feel like this is increasing, and I feel like the Lord spoke to me circumvent and to give this word today is to encourage us and strengthen us and just to help root us in the truth and reality of how we can overcome these obstacles. Amen? So you guys can be seated, please. Thank you for, for standing, for honoring the word. But so as I prayed to the Lord and asked him, you know, what, why he was, he was telling me circumvent, why he gave me that word, he led me to this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. For I do not want you to be unaware, brethren. He doesn't want us to be unaware. So he speaks to us and gives us words like circumvent. And he leads us into scriptures that, that will open our eyes up and remind us so we're not unaware. That our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. He's talking about Israel being delivered out of Egypt. And he's going to go on to talk about them 
walking through the wilderness. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. So here they seen this, the, they, they witnessed the plagues. They witnessed the Red Sea split open. They witnessed the very glory of God manifesting as a cloud by day and a fire by night. I mean, they seen these things with their, with their own eyes. They ate food that fell out of heaven, manna from heaven, food that appeared out of nowhere, quail that blew into the camp in the evening. They seen miracle after miracle. They drank water from a rock. The man of God spoke to the rock and water came from it, right? They seen these things. So like Paul's recounting them through the Lord because he doesn't want us to be unaware. And I think sometimes, like, look, nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased, for they were laid low in the wilderness. How many people in here have witnessed a miracle? I've seen lots of them. And then turn around next week and talk and walk and act like God didn't do what he just did a week ago. I'm sure the same number of hands would go up, I would hope, if we're going to be honest, right? That we've all been in that place, that we've witnessed unbelievable miracles through God and then a hard situation comes up and we question it again we're like God are you going to be here today yeah he's, he's there Yahweh Shema the Lord God who is there it's one of my favorite covenant names from the Lord he's always there it's where the enemy wants us to think that he won't be there but he'll always be there I want you to know that he'll always be there but nevertheless I've seen all these things happen and they still did all of these things against God. Not, not only just questioning, but like literal sins against them, right? Now these things happened as examples for us so that we would not crave evil things as they also did. Reading the Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, is very important. You should read it. Reading your Bible in general is most important, and you should read it. It's full of God's power, His love, His mercy, His nature. It's full of accounts of men and women just like me and you that went through things, that, that faced trials, that faced tribulations, that faced temptations. And it gives us an account through the good and the bad, through their failures and their successes of how we can walk and circumvent obstacles and keep ourselves out of trouble. So we need to be in our words. We need to, you know, he's given it to us as an example. We have to stay in it. We have to allow it to change us, transform us, change our, let's not be led by our feelings. I don't care what your feelings say. If, it, if the word of God says that it's wrong, avoid it, stay away from it. Let the word of God change you and don't try to change the word of God to suit your feelings. We have got to take it as an example who are you O oh man the clay to say to the potter the created vessel to say to the creator that it shouldn't be this way that it should be that way we have to be in his word and we have to know what it says because it's an account for us to keep us from evil that we wouldn't do the same things that those who were before us done because we can say oh we right the pharisee said oh we won't do that and they did it. Jesus said, you're, you're, you're saying and you're doing. You're saying that you wouldn't do it, that you're above that, that, you, that it won't touch you the same way, but yet here you are doing it, right? So we've been given the Word of God. We've been given words like this and times like this. We get, we're, we're given words from the Lord, rhema words from heaven by the Spirit spoken to us that we might circumvent and overcome obstacles, right? And we need that more now than ever. The darkness is increasing. The restrainer is being removed. And we need to be alert and aware and on guard, clinging to God that we might overcome every obstacle. Amen? So verse 7, Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and stood up to play. 
nor let us act immorally as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in one day. Nor let us try the Lord as some of them did and were destroyed by the serpents. Questioning God, questioning his motives. You know, thinking that we can play around with fire. Thinking that we can put ourselves in situations and overcome it. Don't, right, do not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus said, don't tempt him. Don't allow yourself to be put in positions and situations that you could be taken over by the devil, right, to do his will. Nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, and they were written for our instruction, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. Take heed to these things. Don't let yourself be puffed up in pride and think, yeah, it happened to them, but it won't happen to me. Yeah, they allowed themselves to be put in that position, and they gave over to the temptation, but, don't let, but it won't happen to me. I can put myself in that situation because I'm more mature and it won't take me over. Don't, you know, don't allow yourself to spend the night at your girlfriend's or your boyfriend's house where you'll fall into temptation. Don't say, I'm going to go to the bar so I can share Jesus with my friend Billy over there and, and you're an alcoholic and you fall to the temptation. Right? Don't, don't do these things. Circumvent these things. Be, be more mature and buffet the flesh. And, what, you know, don't, don't make provision for the flesh. Don't give yourself up to these things. But take heed so you will not fall. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. I mean, isn't it encouraging to hear the pastor stand up here and say, man, I feel like these things are increasing, and I'm really having to dig in and press in and cling to God to overcome these things. Right? It's encouraging to me when, I, when I've had like serious fathers and, and, and men of God in my life say, yeah, I've had to struggle with this. It's been a real fight. You know, it, it lets me know I'm not, I'm not the only one. This is common, and I see how God's moving in their life and how they're, they're, they're staying clean from it, and they're, you know, they're, they're overcoming it, and it gives us hope when we know that we're not the one alone in the same battle, right? It's common to man. And if if people are telling you that it's not common, well, maybe question it. Maybe question it. Because maybe they haven't... (laughs) Pride is a... Right, pride's a tough thing. Pride is a tough thing. And God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also, so that you will be able to endure it. Oh, it's going to come. The temptation's going to come, but he's going to give you the way out. You're sitting in your bedroom, and you have a problem with internet pornography, and you're, all of a sudden that urge comes to you, and you've got your computer, you got your phone. Guess what? There is a way of escape for you, and it's getting up, off of your tuchus and running out of the room. Running out of it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. He doesn't say resist it. He doesn't say stare it down. This, it's not like the bear in the wilderness where they say, just make yourself big and remain you know, calm and don't run. No, run. Flee from it. Run. Don't allow yourself to be in that situation and then that position. Like, don't, don't, don't tempt God. And don't allow yourself to be tempted. He's given us a way of escape, but we're not always taking it. It's the circumventing of the obstacle. He's given us the way. He says it right here in His Word, and His Word does not lie. His Word is truth, and it's unfailing. But sometimes we're just not taking a hold of the truth and applying it. We're not walking out the door that we need to walk out of. We're allowing the devil to lie to us and tell us, well, that's not loving. If you don't go, if, if, you, if you keep distance from your friend because every time I go around that person, I complain. Or every time I go into this situation, I do that. Or every time I go to, to Aunt Sally's house, 
I, I do this. And the devil wants to tell you, no, it's like, you got to walk in love. Keep putting yourself in that position. Walk in love. No. The loving thing you can do sometimes is to put a guard around yourself and not to allow yourself to be put into that temptation that you can stand and not fall. We have to take the door of escape. We have to be intentional about it. We have to be focused and do it. Right? I mean, if you have an issue, you know, I... So Rabbi mentioned this, uh, The Last Dance. It's a documentary about Michael Jordan and the Bulls, you know. I grew up watching Mark, Michael Jordan. Does anybody know who Michael Jordan and the Bulls are? <laughs> All right. I hope so. Everybody should know, right? So I've been, I've been watching it. And, well, I smoked cigarettes and cigars and stuff for years. And um, so I'm watching this. And Michael Jordan is like one of the greatest athletes in the world. And he's like, during this whole thing, he's smoking a cigar. And, and I have to tell you, I watched, I watched kind of, forgive me, Lord, I binge watched a few episodes of it last night. And it's like, starts stirring in my mind, man, that cigar looks good. Like, I haven't smoked for 12 years, 11, I don't know. You could probably have a cigar. And I'm like, I'm not going to watch that again. Because for some reason, seeing this iconic figure has planted this seed in my mind that it could be okay, that I might be able, because I don't think smoking a cigar is like a heinous sin. But for me, it would probably lead to me being full out addicted to it again and it being an idol in my life so I'm not even going to entertain the idea and I'm not going to allow myself to be put in a position to entertain the idea anymore right some of us though we're, the news is causing us fear and we just keep watching it or this thing is causing that and we just keep doing it we've got to circumvent We've got, to circ- we've got to go around the obstacles, avoid them, right? God has given us examples of others, others, other people's failures and successes so that we can avoid disaster and overcome every temptation. Sometimes God puts a, an amazing example in your life of how you should do something so you know how you should do it. Sometimes God puts a horrible example in your life so you know how you shouldn't do it. Sometimes we're, you know, we have really harsh bosses and, and you know, leaders and situation and, and issues, like things that we're put into. Maybe it's because God wants to teach you and give you an example of what you shouldn't do. And maybe he's putting good role models in your life to show you what you should do. And he's put both of those in this word to give us examples that we should avoid and examples that we should follow. And we have to take heed of those things, right? We have to take, the, take them and, and run with them and grab them. I've always been the, the hard way kind of guy. I've been learning. The Lord's been teaching me. Thank you, God, for your spirit that you're correcting my thinking. I'm tired of learning the hard way. Is anyone else tired of learning the hard way, right? Man, let's, you know, be pliable and give ourselves to the Lord. And let's like examine and reflect. I never examined and reflected. The last few years of my life, I've begun to really examine and reflect, you know, situations in my life. How I could have done better. How I could have responded. What I could have done to avoid it. It's hard to think about those things. You know, but partnering with the Holy Spirit, He always gives me the insight and the direction and the wisdom, right? He'll tell me, you know, like, Lord, I said, if if this thing happened to this, like, giant in the kingdom, what hope is there for me? And He said, I've given given you my hope. You've got to follow it. You've You've got to apply it. 
and you've got to follow it. It doesn't matter who, like, who you think this person is over there, how big you think they are. You follow me. You follow me. God has given us examples to avoid. Avoid immorality. I shared Friday night. I, I had a, a, a young man, friend of mine, amazing man of God, and, and he was uh, dating, courting uh, a young lady. And they would not, if they, if they were going out on a date alone at a restaurant, they would meet at the restaurant. They wouldn't even drive in the car together. Some of us might say, well, that's like ridiculous. No, it's godly. They didn't want to allow themselves to be put in the temptation. Because if we put ourselves in the temptation enough, right? And they also didn't want to allow the accusation for people to see them and say, well, they're doing it. Because maybe they were strong enough to avoid that temptation. But then people who they're discipling or who are younger than them might see that. And maybe they're not strong enough, but they put themselves in that same position. And then they fall. So they didn't want the accusation to come. And they didn't want the temptation to come. It's hard. We've got to like really dig in and press in and allow ourselves to be set right. Here's a, a, a picture, right? So let me set the stage before I read this. Balaam the prophet. Are you guys familiar with the, with the account of Balaam the prophet? Right? So the Israelites are in the wilderness for 40 years. And uh, Balak, the king of, I believe it's Am, Am, the Amalekites, wants to destroy Israel. He sees they're huge. They're a threat. So he finds Balaam the prophet and pure. And he says... Man of God, will you prophesy a curse over them? Will you curse Israel? And they'll be cursed. And they offer him a certain amount of money. And he says, I'll do it. And he goes, he he wrestles with the Lord and and asks God, if you ask him enough times, if you can do something that you shouldn't do, he'll let you go. So Balaam asks enough times. And God lets him go. But he doesn't allow him to curse Israel. He blesses them. So the king, Balak, says, man, I was going to pay you handsomely. I was going to put honor on you. And Balaam said, he wanted that money. He wanted that honor. He said, well, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't curse them. But let me give you a secret into how you can remove them from God's protection and covering. If you send your women into their camp and you seduce them, then they'll, they'll leave the God of Israel and they'll worship your, your false gods. And then God will remove his protection over them. And then you'll be able to attack them and take, overtake them. The Bible says that bad company corrupts good morals. If you put yourself in bad company long enough, it's going to corrupt you. And it's going to overtake you. The Bible doesn't lie. It's full of truth. And only truth. And according to its wisdom, that if you put yourself in bad company long enough, your good morals will succumb to it. I've been there. been evidence of it in my own life. I don't allow myself to be put there to the best of my strength and my ability. I'm not saying I'm a perfect man. But I don't allow myself to be put in those positions and situations. Above reproach, right, Sherry? Above reproach. Above reproach. Always trying to say above reproach. So now we're at this point. While Israel will remain in, I don't know, I'm not even going to say it because it just, that, that city. The people began to play the harlot with the daughters of Moab. For they invited the people to the sacrifices of their God. And the people ate and bowed down to their God. So Israel joined themselves to Baal of Peor, and the Lord was angry against Israel. They seen the Red Sea part. They seen the fire by night and the glory, the cloud by day. They ate from manna from heaven and quail from the wind. They drank water from a rock. 
and they succumb to the temptation. We can't allow ourselves to be in that situation. God has given us the way of escape. And the way of escape isn't by running into the fire. The way of escape is by running out the fire escape, right? We have to, we have to heed that and not let ourselves be taken, taken into that, right? Paul says it's actually reported that there are immor- that there's immorality among you. An immorality such, of a, such a kind that does not even exist among the Gentiles. That someone has his father's wife. You have become ignorant or arrogant and have not mourned instead. So that one who had done this deed would be removed from your midst. Going back to that, oh, don't call them out. Because if you do, then you're not loving. If you remove them from that position that they, you know, that place of ministry, if you know that they're, you know, sleeping with their girlfriend or living with their girlfriend and you put them in that position of ministry, like, how, how, why would we do that? How can we? If they're so-called believers, right? Because Paul goes on to say, listen, I'm not talking about you being around people of immorality that's of the world. I'm talking about so-called believers, You know what you're doing when you allow that to happen? For one, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And and for two, you're allowing that person to think that they're in good graces with God. That they're standing right. Because unfortunately, a lot of us equate ministry or anointing with right standing before God. Guess what? It's not. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7 that many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not heal the sick? Did we not cast out devils? And I will say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. They did the works of God. They were anointed by God to do ministry. They were ministering, but yet were not right with God. But somebody somehow allowed them to think they were, or they thought they were, because they seen God move through them. But some of us think it's unloving if we call out a brother or sister or want to like remove and cut off someone from being a so-called brethren when we know that they're doing what they shouldn't do. And we've got to separate ourselves from them. I'm not saying that we, you know, should do it unlovingly, but we've got to we've got to be serious and we've got to separate ourselves from people sometimes. And I just want to get to this. No, okay. I'm just going to move on from that. It's later on. Because Paul like, Paul gives us some wisdom of what we should do if we're caught in, in immoral situations. We should avoid immorality. We should avoid pride. King Nebuchadnezzar he knew that he seen witness with his own eyes. Here we go again. Somebody that witnessed with his own eyes the reality of God. That God is real. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was real. The God of Israel, he was real and he was the God. And the only God. And then one day though, he gets up on his pedestal. He's looking at his kingdom. And all this happened to Nebuchadnezzar the king. Twelve months later, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. The king reflected and said, Is this not Babylon the Great, which I myself have built as a royal residence by the might of my power and for the glory of my majesty? Again, we see the Lord move in in our lives in a mighty way and we think we're special. You're not special. I mean, you're special because God chose you, but He didn't choose you because you're special. He chose you and made you special. He didn't choose you because you were special, right? And the only reason that you are doing anything good is because he's allowed you, because he's anointed you, because he's put a gift on you, because he's put a calling on you, because he's put a spirit on you. That's why you're doing anything good. That's why he, he allowed Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was his servant. He allowed Nebuchadnezzar to do the things he did for his glory, for God's glory, for his power, for his majesty. And Nebuchadnezzar's like, look at what I've done. So the Lord humbles him. While the word was in the mouth, was in the king's mouth, a voice came from heaven saying, Nebuchadnezzar, 
you, I declare sovereignty has been removed from you. How many of us have like, this thing is in our lips. It's on our hearts. And we walk into it. We step into it. We still think that we deserve honor. That we deserve, you know. A couple of weeks ago, right? I talked about building a culture of honor. I don't know. Some of you might have heard it. Who deserves more honor? The person next to you. They deserve more, right? Do not think more highly of yourselves than you ought to. We think more highly of ourselves than we should, and then we get in trouble. And then the Lord, he might remove something from you. But we've been given these examples. The point is this, that we've been given these examples of ones like Nebuchadnezzar. Some people are, are you know, the Lord has anointed them for the, for the marketplace, for business, and they're able to grow big businesses. And the Lord, maybe the Lord's anointed you with leadership and you're able to like build big groups of whatever. And you're really, he's given you the gift of influence. Remember that, he's given you that gift. And we have to avoid pride. We can't allow us, ourselves to think that it's us. We have to know that it's him. God led Nebuchadnezzar to the point of repentance, right? He led him like eat and drove him away and for seven years let him eat like the cattle and, and all that stuff until he recognized the Most High is the ruler over the realm of mankind and bestowed it on whomever he, he wishes. Immediately the word concerning Nebuchadnezzar was filled and he was driven away, right? Like, we, okay. And he let him, let him be, he ended up repenting and the Lord restored him, right? He repented and the Lord restored him. So, if that's you today, that's the good news. That's the beautiful thing of it. Is like I shared earlier. If if you're in this position, if you're in, if you're practicing sexual immorality today, you today is the day. You can repent and you can stop, and you can be washed clean by the blood of Jesus. Right? The Word of God says, if you say that you have no sin, you're a liar, and the truth isn't in you. Right? But if you confess your sin, then he is faithful to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Today is the day. If you're walking in pride, if you're full of pride and you're puffed up, stop. Repent. Call upon the name of Jesus. Ask him to fix you. Ask him to help you. And know that he'll, he'll do it. If you ask from a genuine heart, right? From a truly repented heart, he'll do it. God has given us examples of others' failures and successes so that we can avoid disaster and overcome every temptation. We have to pay close attention to the direction God gives us through His Word, and it will keep us above reproach. Again, not being led by our feelings. Your feelings will lie to you. Feelings, you know, are good. Feelings can come from God, but we are in a fallen and broken world and we're still wrestling against the world, the flesh and the devil and your feelings will mislead you your feelings will lead you astray M marriage you know I think most of us would that have been married for, for over a year would probably agree that you know the butterflies in the stomach they're not every day right like that thing that the feeling of love or whatever it is you know it may not still be the same right love is an action word love is something that we do love we keep pressing into love is this intimacy like Bruce and Rachel were talking about talking and, and fellowshipping and connecting and spending time together and knowing each other's hearts and you know it's not it's not about feeling the pretty girl or the handsome man walks by and and you get the butterflies look that's not love that's not love I could tell you what it is but it's not love right god has given us examples to follow we've got to follow purity 
Joseph, he, we've got to follow, thank you, amen to that, right? We've got to follow purity. We've got to keep ourselves pure. We've got to keep ourselves above reproach. We've got to keep ourselves clean. We've got to run from things that, that, that would lead us into anything else. This is Joseph in Genesis. So he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge, right? Joseph ended up being put into Potiphar's house, a rich man's house. And this rich man seemed that everything Joseph touched and everything he did was blessed, turned to gold, right? And he was full of wisdom, full of knowledge, did good things. So Potiphar, Joseph, I'm leaving you in charge of my house. You can have everything but my wife. So he left, he left everything he owned in Joseph's charge. And with him, there he did not concern himself with anything except the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. It came about after these events that his master's wife looked with desire at Joseph. And she said to him, lie with me. But he refused and said to, said to his master's wife, Behold, with me here my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. And he has put all that he owns in my charge. There is no one greater in this house than I. And he has withheld nothing from me except you. You know, some of us have a lot, but we want that one thing. And we keep allowing ourselves to look at it. And we keep allowing ourselves to play the game and to think about it, what it would be like, and all of this stuff, right? He's given us everything in the house. But the one thing, right? What does that sound, doesn't that sound familiar? It sounds like all the way back in Genesis 1 or 3, right? There was a similar story. I give you this whole garden, but this one thing I tell you not to do, right? It's withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do this great evil and sin against God? Like, he shouldn't even been in this conversation with her. Would have been a good starting place, right? Not to even engage with her in this. Not to even talk to her, right? But he did. He tried to set her straight. He tried to tell her, like, nope. As she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to lie beside her. He didn't He stopped listening, right? Or be with her. Now it happened one day that he went into the house to do his work, and none of the men of the household were there inside. Oop, he should have left. Oh, man, he should have left, right? There's Hello? Oh, nope. I'll be back in a minute. But he didn't. Because he knew. He knew himself, right? And again, this is going back to that. Maybe, maybe you can over. Maybe the temptation won't take you. But the accusation will. If you allow yourself to be put in that place, the accusation will. She called him by his garment saying, lie with me. He left his garment in her hand. Then he fled and he went outside. He ran. He didn't play, but he got put in this position, unfortunately, where she had a garment and now the accusation could come. We've got to avoid it. We've got to avoid allowing ourselves to be put in that place where the accusation can come. We've got to keep ourselves clean, right? But we've got to do the same thing he did. Even if the accusation does come, it happens, I get it. We, you know, we find ourselves in situations where we can't, man, we, didn't, we did everything we could to avoid it. Run from it. Right? That's what Paul said. Now you flee from youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. When these young guys come to me and ask me, how do I stay clean from sexual sin? The only advice that I know that the Bible gives is to flee from it. Run from it. That's right. Give it to Heisman, right? I'm out. Flee from it. There's no other thing. There's no, there, like, I've, I've searched the scriptures. It's the only advice I, I've found in them. But the word of God, don't let yourself be put in that position. Flee from that and run, run towards the good thing. 
Flee from that and go find your brother in, in, in the Lord and have him pray for you. Get him on the phone. Man, I need you right now, right? Like, the devil's on my trail. Temptation has come. Flee from it. You've got to run from it. I'm almost done, guys. Follow humility. Have this, this, Jesus is the perfect example, right? Paul says in Philippians, have this attitude in yourselves, which is also in Christ Jesus, who although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. I mean, I talked about this earlier, right? We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to honor others greater than ourselves. We need to think less of ourselves than we do of others. Do not think too highly of yourself, right? God exalts the humble and he humbles the proud. We have, to, uh, we have to follow humility. We have to follow Jesus' example of washing one another's feet, of humbling ourselves, of serving each other. As a pastor, I can tell you there's a lot of people that expect to be served and they don't want to serve. Just being real with you. Let's serve one another. And I mean, I got to say, this is a loving place. So don't get me wrong. This place is full of love and grace and servants. Yeah. The last ladies meeting that we had, Cynthia was sharing with my wife, like, what is going on here? Alyssa, we had a baby shower for Alyssa. Everybody just jumps in and starts cleaning up. We don't have to have a, like, we haven't had a specific like hospitality cleanup team at some time because everyone just jumps up and starts cleaning up. The trash is empty. The floor is swept. The counters are wiped off. The tables are wiped off. And nobody's telling anybody to do anything. So you guys are amazing. We have to keep that going. We have to continue to be humble and keep, you know, keep serving one another in a good way. I mean, it's a, it's a really beautiful thing that's happening, and I'm really, uh, it really moves me. But Jesus emptied himself out, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to be obedient to the Lord. I'm going to share this. I've was reading in uh, 1 Kings this morning and Solomon's son Rehoboam Rehoboam was wicked like his dad right we know that Solomon fell off like the most wise man in the world God used him to build the, the kingdom I mean right of Israel built Israel and we know Solomon fell off he had a thousand wives and concubines and was worshiping their gods and building high places of sacrifice. And his son, Rehobim, followed that same example and continued in it. And there was a man of God that came to Judah to speak to him and told him, like the Lord more or less is going to destroy this altar that you're worshiping on. And Rehobim said, oh, well, sit and have some bread and water and be refreshed. And the man of God said, nope, God told me to not eat bread or water in Judah and not leave the same way I came in. And he left. Oh, but the story, it's sad. So he leaves, but then there's a prophet of God that hears about it and goes and finds him and tells him an angel came to me and said that you are to come back to my house and eat bread and drink water. And the guy fell prey to that lie. And he followed the, the prophet back to his house. And he ate bread and drank water. And then the Lord spoke through the prophet and said, Because you disobeyed me, your life will be taken. So I don't care what person comes to you saying they heard what from who. You follow the voice of the Lord. When he tells you to, I don't care what man or woman comes to you and tells you, oh, the Lord told me that you're to be my husband or my wife or that you're to be with me or whatever it is. You follow the voice and the word 
of the Lord and you reject and deny anything else, humble yourself and be obedient even to the point of death on a cross. I don't care how attractive it sounds to you, how great it sounds to you. If it goes opposes this word of God, humble yourself and be obedient to his word and his calling to your life. Amen. We have to take the examples, the good and the bad of others that have been presented before us and study them and look at them and pull out the good stuff, see the bad stuff, and apply it to our lives because God has given us a way of escape, how to circumvent every obstacle, trial, and situation in your life. And we have to take a hold of that open door and, and take the way of escape. Amen? Amen. Amen.